I play in the Duluth Trading Cure Bowl in Orlando last week. It turns out it had been suspended from all team activities following a car accident earlier on the morning, December the 9th, the same day the Roadrunners celebrated their back-to-back -back Conference USA Championships with a river parade. According to a police report obtained by KSAT 12, Cephas was driving a silver Nissan when he lost control of his car, rolled it over at Babcock Road and UTSA Boulevard near the main campus at 325 in the morning. He did have a passenger in the car, fellow UTSA football player Emmanuel Odatola. Cephas was taken to the magistrate's office to provide a blood sample with the results of which are still pending, and later he was taken to the hospital for treatment of injuries. At the time, there are no official reason why Cephas did not play in the Roadrunners 18 to 12 loss to the Troy Trojans, but when contacted today, here's a statement released by the university regarding Cephas' status, and it said, in total, we are aware of the incident involving Joshua Cephas. We continue to gather more information. In the meantime, per our department policy, he has been suspended from all team activities. Following the University of the Incarnate Word Cardinals record-setting football season, five members of the team have earned Stats Perform FCS All-America Honors. One of the first team, two on the second team, one on the third team, and one freshman honors. Starting quarterback Lindsey Scott Jr. was named first team All-America after throwing for 60 touchdowns and scoring another 11 on the ground, helping lead the Cardinals to their first ever FCS National Semifinals game, where they lost to the defending champion North Dakota State 35-32. Wide receiver Taylor Grimes and linebacker Kalechi Anilabechi were selected to the second team after Grimes scored 15 touchdowns this season, and Anilabechi led the Cardinals with a total of 114 tackles and 65 seconds. Solo receiver Darian Chafin secured a spot on the third team after leading the team with 18 touchdown receptions. And Cole Wilson was named to the freshman All-America team after turning two punts for touchdowns. There are now reports the University of Texas and Oklahoma could join the SEC as early as 2024, meaning this coming season could be their last in the Big 12. Speculation the Longhorns and Sooners could bowl for the Big 12 before 2025 season has begun to grow over the last few days, but according to reports, it all hinges on whether or not they can get clearance to do so from both Fox and ESPN networks that hold the rights to broadcast Big 12 games through 2025 because their departure would mean less viewership and therefore less value. It would also have to do with any penalties the two schools would have to pay in order to leave one year early, estimated to be around $80 million. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. On Monday, we told you the possibility of the Eagles being without their star quarterback Jalen Hurts when Philadelphia meets the Dallas Cowboys on Christmas Eve afternoon in a key NFC East showdowns. Hurts suffered a sprain to his throwing shoulder when he was driven into the ground by Travis Gibson in the third quarter. The Eagles 25-20 win over the Bears to push Philly to a 13-1 record, while the Cowboys are 10-4, coming off their unexpected 30-24 overtime loss for the Jaguars in Jacksonville. But the Eagles head coach says don't count Hurts out just yet. I do not put it past Jalen Hurts. I don't put anything past Jalen Hurts um, as far as his mental and physical toughness. So there's a chance he could play this week. And so um, he is one of the toughest guys I know. Um, and he heals fast. He's a freak. In fact, he actually said his body, meaning Jalen Hurts' body, is not like yours and mine. And he included himself in this how would you call it, assessment of how not in shape we are. Right. So apparently he's in such good shape, he could play this week. But there's a lot of speculation saying he may miss actually the next two games with this injury just to protect that arm. We shall see. But none we're not in his shape, yeah, just to be clear. Here. <laughs> Thanks. Not at all. Our KSAT Q&A with Mayor Ron Nirenberg is next. From the ongoing construction saga along the St. Mary's Strip to cold winter weather headed our way and preparations right here in the city of San Antonio. A lot to talk about today with Mayor Ron Nirenberg, who joins us now for our KSAT Q&A. Mayor, thanks for being here as always on Tuesdays. Let's first talk about this winter weather, this freeze expected later this week. What preparations is the city making right now if people need help during that time? Yes, well, we're making a lot of preparations. And, and first to note what we've been hearing from the weather uh, forecasting, the meteorology, as well as from the state uh, and our local, is that this is gonna be a little bit different of a, of a cold snap. This is gonna be pretty dry. So uh, we don't anticipate any precipitation that always uh, complicates things exponentially, but it's gonna be very, very cold. So the city released a um, list of warming centers that will be open starting Thursday afternoon. Uh, and of course, anybody that needs a ride to a warming center just simply needs to call 311. There's seven of those uh, that are gonna be located throughout the city. So hopefully accessible for most folks uh, without uh, needing assistance. But if you do need assistance, call 311. Also, VIA is gonna be offering free rides to those warming centers. 
our biggest concern, honestly, is is um, uh, unsheltered individuals. And so for the last week and a half or so, our homeless outreach has been working to to talk to those folks who are out there to make sure that they have the proper supplies, that they have blankets, et cetera, and that are also uh, we're trying to convince them to come into shelter. Uh, Haven for Hope is going to be expanding their uh, intake hours, and we have shelters uh, with churches, et cetera, all throughout the city that are going to be taking folks in because it's going to be uh, very cold, deathly cold if you're out there unprotected. So we're encouraging folks to get to shelter. Uh, for for most residents, the, the thing to keep in mind is the four P's, you know, pets, uh, plants, uh, people, and pipes. And uh, from saws, they're encouraging folks to empty out their, their water pipes that might be exposed to uh, the external conditions and just practice, um, you know, common sense. Uh, wrap the outdoor faucet, hose bibs, that sort of thing. Uh, just protect yourself because this is going to be a hard freeze. It's going to go into the upper teens and preparation is going to be key. I will tell you there's there's always a concern because, you know, frankly, in my view, the state hasn't really addressed the overall grid issues of the state from Winter Storm Uri, but we are assured uh, from ERCOT that uh, there is enough capacity on the grid to meet demand. That's certainly the case here in San Antonio with CPS Energy, and we had a board meeting yesterday to go over that. But ERCOT is pretty adamant about the fact that there's enough capacity on the grid to meet that demand. But of course, we had a lot of learning after Winter Storm Uri. We've got a lot yes. of fail safes in place with regard to generation, backup generation, our critical care circuits, et cetera. We'll be on standby for any contingency and including if we see any unforeseen precipitation. But uh, there's a lot of prep going involved getting uh, to, to this point, and, and we want to make sure that we're as safe and protected as possible. All right, Mary, if we could shift gears here real quick, I want to talk about the ongoing construction there on the St. Mary Strip. All those business owners have been putting up with it for quite some time. There have been delays. There's also been some money offered to them, which they were not exactly happy about the amount. What is the latest on that situation? Are we on target to get that job done on time? Where do things stand there? Yeah, <clears throat> so I, I will tell you, it's, it's frustrating all around watching this North St. Mary's Strip saga unfold. Uh, I will tell you that the original project timeline was changed in June because of uh, the scope of that project changed. But since then, uh, we've been putting uh, the pressure on the contractor to, to speed up construction. And, and I have been briefed that the uh, construction completion date is, is March. So it's coming up and that date has not slipped. And so uh, we are, we are uh, focused on making sure that that project is completed. Now, there was a discussion at the council committee uh, the other day about uh, things that we can do to enhance uh, the business opportunities there and make sure that, frankly, people know that those businesses are open on the St. Mary's Strip. If you want to go to your favorite uh, restaurant or bar on the Strip, they are open. And I would encourage that, especially you know, as we get into the holiday season, go uh, patronize your local businesses. And that includes on the St. Mary's Strip. Uh, the program that was uh, proposed by city staff frankly, got a lot of criticism because it was focused on making sure that we're driving uh, customers to those establishments. Uh, but we're going to continue to work to make sure that we're addressing the needs of those businesses. Um, we don't want to see construction uh, cause the uh, decline of businesses on the long term, because once this project is done, it's going to be good for everybody. But we want to make sure that we endure until then. So there's going to con be continued work to make sure uh, that we're not we're not just expecting the businesses themselves to take on this burden by themselves. Yeah, you mentioned that criticism, and we heard that from business owners after the approval of that money going towards them to help with things like marketing so people know that they're up and running for those bars and venues. They were saying we need more than that. They need more to keep their doors open, especially after surviving COVID right. and now dealing with this. So is there any opportunity for more assistance in terms of actually keeping the doors of these businesses open that could be discussed on the city's part? You know, that, that pilot program that was recommended uh, by staff was uh, put together in consultation with the Small Business Advisory Committee because we heard that one of the concerns was uh, driving customers to businesses that are open but are suffering because of uh, people not going over there because of construction. Uh, we want to make sure that, again, uh, construction is not dissuading people from visiting those businesses that want to go. So that's that's a primary focus. But we're going to continue to have conversations with those businesses to make sure 
they're addressing needs. Uh, I, you know, one of the pilot programs that was created back in 2014 was focused on CPS and SAWS uh, bills relief for those small businesses. Uh, the size of the program, frankly, there wasn't that many people that made use of that program, but we're going to continue to look at that as one on one opportunity that we have control over uh, to help provide a little bit of relief. But again, the big picture is we want to make sure that we get this project done on time, get it done by March, uh, so that those businesses will, will reap the benefits of this construction project, which frankly is going to really improve the North St. Mary's Strip long term once it's completed. All right, Mayor Ron Nirenberg, thanks so much for sharing some time with us here this evening. And I do want to mention that we have the list of those warming centers that the city yeah. will be opening and ways that you can get help from VIA on our website as well. And, and Myra, may I, may I add one other thing? This is important for our unsheltered population and, and folks who may be working in this area. If you uh, need to connect with that hotline, it'll be open extended hours starting st Thursday. And that number to call is 210 207 1799. That's the Homeless Connection Hotline if anybody needs that assistance. 210-207-1799. Thanks, Mayor. Right. Stay warm out there. Have a happy and safe holiday season. Merry Christmas. You as well. Thanks so much. We'll be right back. All right, winning a lotto once is pretty lucky, but winning six times with the same exact numbers, that is on another level. It happened for this man in Massachusetts. Raymond Roberts bought six tickets using the same numbers. They are combinations of anniversary dates and birthdays, the same numbers he's been using for more than 20 years. Well, they finally paid off. Yeah, the jackpot he won is called $25,000 a year for life. Now you multiply that by six, that's a hundred. 150 grand a year. Roberts took the cash option on five of his prizes, which amounts to a total of just shy of $2 million. He's taking the final winning ticket in annual payments. The first thing he said he wants to do is buy a motorcycle. <laughs> his persistence has paid off. Yes. Look outside with live cam. We're going to talk once again about the timing of the cold weather because we got to wait a bit for that to really get here. But a winner's here. Yeah, that's right. We have a winner. Ooh, tis the season. It even puts a smile on Gerber's face. I mean, no, it does. It, you know, it <laughs> makes my cold heart happy. <laughs> it grows three sizes. We love him so much. Exactly. I glance over you. He's smiling. All right. You can't beat it. Thermometer ornament winner today, Rosalinda Crane of San Antonio. The Rosalinda Crane who will be receiving an email from me just momentarily. You go to ksat.com slash thermometer to enter that drawing and you see some of them displayed of course on our Christmas tree behind us. 52 right now by midnight we're 45 near 40 degrees to start the day tomorrow. Morning fog, some afternoon sun, more of the same. Thursdays when all the changes come we'll talk about how cold in a bit. It would appear I chose a very bad night to go see the lights at the Botanical Gardens on Thursday. <laughs> My family from Ohio will feel right at home. Apparently. I was going to say, maybe they will like it. I, they might even complain about the cold, even coming from the north, right? Yeah, the cold and wind. And I'm going to get into the wind here in a little more detail than we did last time. Uh, more of the same tomorrow. Cold air arrives Thursday afternoon. This is not going to be like February of 2021. We talked about that. Uh, that's when we had 107 hours straight of freezing temperatures at most up to 24 hours this time around. That's it. Let's start with tomorrow. Then we'll get to the colder air morning fog at 40 degrees, some afternoon sun 56 and not much of a breeze out there. Just light and variable. You notice those morning temperatures drop off Friday morning, 18 Saturday morning, 20 Sunday, Christmas day around 24 in the morning. And then we moderate upward a bit. Let's focus on Thursday. That's when the changes happen. You will not wake up to this cold front on Thursday. So don't wake up on Thursday thinking eh, it's in the 40s. What cold front? <laughs> just, just wait patience into the afternoon. 7 a.m. We could be in the single digits in the panhandle by one o'clock. We're in the lower 60s. All in all, actually a mild and relatively warm uh, Thursday. That's just around noon 1 p.m. Then the cold air hits in. You're going to feel it immediately. This cold front's going to pack a punch right away. I anticipate about a 30 degree temperature drop from about 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. And temperatures at or below freezing around 7 p.m. on Thursday. Then that sets the stage for Friday morning. That's our low point temperature wise, the coldest we should be. 
Hondo Uvalde about 17 Del Rio 19 junction as cold as eight Friday morning. 18 around town here in San Antonio, but you get up to Bulverde, Bernie 14, Kerrville as cool as 12, Poteet to Pleasanton about 20 for the morning low temperature on Friday. But here's the key. We're going to combine those with some very gusty winds. So Thursday, once the front hits, the wind immediately ramps up and will be gusting up to 40 miles per hour. That's going to be the case through Thursday night and then even a little bit into Friday morning. And that sets the stage for wind chills periodically down into the single digits early on Friday morning. So if you plan on, you know, Headed to the grocery store, getting some last minute errands done or just all your gift shopping done Friday morning. Uh, <clears throat> it's going to be cold. Be prepared for it. wind chills down in the single digits, but that wind will pump the brakes pretty quickly by Friday afternoons. So we're only going to have to deal with that wind Thursday afternoon and evening and through Friday morning. So inflatables in the yard, not a good idea to have them inflated uh, Thursday night and Friday morning. Afternoon temperatures climb above freezing. Notice by Friday we're up to 36. Saturday we're up to 42 Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. I mean 51 uh, later on by the afternoon 51 degrees. So despite the freeze in the morning temperatures will rebound nicely because nothing but sunshine. Travel around Texas, no problem. Roadways just fine. Dry roads just because it's cold doesn't mean we're going to have ice because we have no precipitation to go with this. Nothing but sunshine. I mentioned no precipitation, no snow, no ice, no rain. We're just talking cold out there. So just, you know, outdoor activities, you'll notice that chill in the air, of course. Afternoons are going to be above freezing, 30s, 40s, then even near 50 degrees from Friday through Christmas Day. But let's talk about the big picture where if you're flying, you could have some travel troubles. Well, right now it's southeastern U.S. and parts of South Florida and Southwest Florida with some rain. But going forward in time as this big system gets wound up in the northern part of the country. Snow likely from even northern Colorado. This is Wednesday, Wednesday from northern Colorado to Iowa into Minnesota, Wisconsin, and then Thursday it transitions to the Great Lakes region, Chicago, even down into St. Louis toward Memphis in terms of snowfall. Then Friday, that activity pushes eastward on into the New England area. And that's when we could have some travel troubles basically between now and Christmas would be some of that snow in the northern tier the next few days. Around here, what did I say? No snow, just sun. So uh, kids, sorry, you won't be able to have the white Christmas, but I know not all adults are complaining. So we'll have that sun shining cold in those mornings uh, dipping down back into the upper teens Friday. That's our low point. Then we moderate so many layers involved with the snow. Yeah. Getting the kids dressed. Mm -hmm. I've done it one time in my life that I'm good. And they always kick their boots off in the car, or their shoes. They take it off. Mm -hmm. Have yeah. fun. <laughs> Stay warm. In case you missed it coming up next. Here's today's In Case You Missed It. It is Tuesday, it is December 20th. One year later and still no answers. Yeah, we're talking about the case of Lena Keel who disappeared a year ago today. That three-year-old girl from an Afghan family vanished from her apartment complex's playground right near the medical center. What you're looking at is the last known footage of three-year-old Lena Keel. This video taken December 20th, 2021 at the playground from which she disappeared. She was with her mother and her younger brother. At some point during the video, she walked off the screen. Rewards offered by Crime Stoppers and the Islamic Center of San Antonio total a quarter million dollars. San Antonio police believe there's a critical witness out there somewhere, someone who must know something about what happened to Lena Keel. And until the young girl is found, they say they can't rule any person or theory out. The unofficial start to the San Antonio rodeo is going to look different this year because Cowboy Breakfast 2023 was canceled. The foundation making that announcement today. Last month, we told you that the annual breakfast was at risk of being canceled because of a lack of scholarships and funding. In a statement, the foundation said in part, quote, we were unable to meet our timeline to pull the logistics together to implement the 2023 in-person event, end quote. 
All right, right now on KSAT.com, some local talent making a top prize this holiday season. A fourth grade student in Northeast Independent School District won this year's regional holiday card art contest. You can take a closer look at the winning card featuring Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Just head to KSAT.com. KSAT 12-hour forecast tomorrow morning. Some fog, 6 a.m. We're at 40 degrees. And then by the noon hour, we'll squeeze in a little bit of sun at 53. By the afternoon, mid-50s. So really more of the same. Thursday afternoon is when the changes come. You won't wake up to the cold front, but you are going to bed to the cold front on Thursday. Sharp temperature drop, probably a 30 degree drop Thursday afternoon and evening. I think by Thursday, 7 p.m. will be below freezing. Cold mornings below freezing, but afternoons above freezing Friday through Christmas. Thanks, Adam. And thank you for watching the news at 6. Hope to see you back here for the night beat tonight at 10. Have a good evening.